Hello, I'm Elizabeth Roberts, and this is a short introduction to the new Bashara Foundation course to let you know something of its content, its aims, and what it would involve if you were to join. Over the last few years, there has been a flowering of different online learning opportunities under the auspices of Bashara. Some of these have focused on the works of particular individuals, such as Rumi or Dante or Ibn Arabi, while others have brought together a wider range of different wisdom traditions from across the globe. These courses have attracted people from a broad variety of different cultural and religious and non-religious backgrounds and different levels of experience. And one of the things this situation has highlighted for us is the desirability of a new introductory course into what you might call the foundational ideas of Bashara. And by the foundational ideas of Bashara, I mean what it is like to know and understand and visualize and imagine oneself and the world within the light of the unity of being. Now, this is not a perspective that many of us have been brought up in. And indeed, it is radically different from the way most of us understand ourselves and our place in the world. However, once known, it can be recognized in the words of enlightened men and women down the ages. So for the purpose of this course, we have invited five or six of our most experienced presenters and speakers to introduce different aspects of the metaphysics of unity and of its embodiment on the spiritual path. Jane Clark is one of our speakers, and I would like to ask Jane now if you could say a little bit more about the content of the course and how such an education is approached. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, the main material that we will be studying on this course is taken from the works of the great Andalusian mystic um, and philosopher Mohidin Ibn Arabi, who lived in the 13th century. Ibn Arabi um, was writing within the Islamic tradition, but the reason that we study him on Bashara courses is not because of his religion as such, because Bashara is completely non-denominational in its approach, but because of the, the detailed and comprehensive way he outlines the principle of unity, which, as you say, is lies at the heart of all the world's great mystical and spiritual traditions. But in many of these traditions, the idea of unity is implicit, meaning that it is there, but it is not directly or openly stated. Uh, whereas with Ibn Arabi, it is explicit. He takes the idea that there is only one reality um, as the starting point, and he explores how that idea plays out at every level of existence, from the spiritual to the, to the material. And his approach has been likened to looking um, from the apex of a pyramid. If you look um, from the ground um, up a pyramid, then you only ever see a, a part of it. You only ever get a partial view. But if you look from the top downwards, then you can see the whole of the pyramid and you can see how the whole thing is put together. One of the most important aspects of Ibn Arabi's thought is his understanding of the human being and the role that we play in the world. So this course has the possibility of transforming not just the way that we understand ourselves, I mean, who we are, what our, our role is, what our potential is, 
but also to understand the other beings in the in in the world like the plants and the animals what they are um what our relationship with them should be and so at the moment when we are facing a, a, a global crisis um then it's clear that this course has the possibility um of of changing things way beyond any personal benefit that we are we myself ourselves may may um, obtain from it and we call it a foundation course because it's not intended that this should be the end of the line for students rather it is really a starting place from which other things can be explored these may be other spiritual traditions or other fields of knowledge such as art or science but perhaps more important than these is the fact that um it gives us a possibility of living our daily lives in a in a different way in a way which is has more consciousness and awareness of the way that things really are because of this um the way the course is structured is that it's not about learning about ideas and principles but more about finding the reality of them within ourselves and so the main mode of study is going to be discussion there will be presentations from people like myself and there will be facilitators who will be present at the sessions but the the principal um, mode of study will be um to do with the interaction between the students and the texts and in fact between each other what you're saying is very interesting jane because it resonates with what we're hearing from our students that the learning they are looking for should not remain purely at the level of ideas but ways must be found to integrate it into our daily lives so it becomes something that we live in a more moment to moment way this continuity of practice is easier to sustain in a residential situation rather than online and this is why the course begins with an intensive residential weekend where everybody can start to get to know one another and study and work and meditate together for the subsequent online portion of the course the presenters and facilitators have sought different and creative ways of maintaining this practical focus between sessions so this is very much something that has been built into the structure of the course you may be wondering who this course is aimed at and who might apply the course is open to anybody who finds in themselves uh, a need or a longing to know ourselves and our place in the world better and for this there are two important factors one is an open curious mind that is a mind that is willing to question its own assumptions and beliefs but also to question and wrestle with any new ideas um until it is happy it is satisfied that they make sense and are clear and the other factor is a receptive heart and this is perhaps best illustrated by a story there is a, an old sufi tale of a man who had reached a point in his life where he felt dissatisfied he thought surely there must be more to life than this so hearing of a, a wise teacher who had come into the region he decided that he would go and ask to become the pupil of this teacher so he traveled to where the man was and was kindly received the teacher said to him there is just one question that i must ask you can you tell me 
what it is that you love. The man thought and thought some more and said, well, no, actually, I don't think there's anything that I really love. Oh dear, said the teacher, then I'm afraid there is nothing I can do for you. So disappointed and crestfallen, the man turned to leave. But as he reached the door, a thought struck him. And he turned back to the teacher and said, well, I do have a donkey of whom I'm very fond. Ah, said the teacher then we have somewhere to start. <laughs>